Apostle Paul a jerk. Really, in this letter to the Corinthians, Paul's being kind of a jerk. Both about Consider it the greatest spitting. I tell them I'm Christ like they envision modern Christian. I tell them I'm nothing like check conditions that I'm living. I preach Christ, we ain't fake delivering. Listen, candy man, as soon as they know. It's not about how much Bible chapter and verse you know, it's about how much Bible you willing to obey. Hey, what's going on, y'all? This is your boy Reese Johnson, and this is the Gutter and Saint Podcast. Y'all already know what to do like the podcast. Subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Hit the bell for notification and share this out. Tell a friend who will tell a friend who will tell a next to kin. Gutter and Saint is back at it again. Now, I'm going to need all my sisters in Christ to understand this. I'm not opposed to women ministering the gospel of Christ because we are all called to make disciples of many nations. However, y'all know biblically y'all cannot be labeled a pastor. That, now that's that's the Bible. Don't come and beat me up. It's the Bible. You can minister, you can evangelize, you can be a prophetess, but pastor, no. If you have an issue with that, take that up with the Lord. Now, shout out to all the sisters who minister the word, who minister the gospel and stick to the scriptures. You know what I mean? Who stick to the word and don't deviate. You know what I mean? And make up all these, you know, outlandish things. Now, this pod is not for y'all. You know, for all the, this pod is not for the sisters who stick to the scripts. This pod is for the females who go so hard to appeal to the culture, to twist the scriptures just so they can make people feel good. These radical liberal Christians has gone from bad to worse. I have no problem with women declaring the word of God. I have no problem with women ministering the word of God in context. But it's trying to find sisters who minister the, minister the word in context and don't deviate into all this other stuff is very almost like slim to none. It's almost like you can't find no, you know, decent male pastors these days. But it's, it seems like everybody is is stuck on twisting the scriptures to appeal to people. Recently, I came across a video of a lady named Pastor L. Now, Pastor L is of the Rainbow community and she says she's a preacher. You know what I mean? Now, I'm only assuming that, you know, she's of the rainbow community based off of her TikTok page and how she addressed herself. She addressed herself with pronouns, she or they. Now, she or they, those pronouns don't have no, you know, no lot in the church, but that's how she pronounced herself when she preaches at churches. If you don't believe me, Check out this clip. My name is Pastor L. I use pronouns like she or they. I'm a campus minister in Chicago for a joint Lutheran Episcopal campus ministry downtown on the Loop, where I also pastor to a group of unhoused folks. Um, before we get started, we, I wanted to just name something too uh, from the reading from Corinthians. You might have noticed that we didn't read one part out loud, and that's because it's yikes. So, um, Putting that reading in original context, um, Paul himself uh, was a Jewish man, right? And so there were sort of inter-Jewish conversations and disagreements about the role of Jesus and what that means. Uh, but really, in this letter to the Corinthians, Paul's being kind of a jerk, both about Jewish people and about the Greeks. And even more important than his original intent is the way that verses like that have been used throughout the ages to harm our Jewish siblings. And so we wanted to just sort of name that right out, even before we got started with anything else, um, and to kind of put that before us as something particularly those of us gathered here who are Christians, the way that we can look at the way our traditions, the way that our scriptures have been used to harm our siblings and to be accountable for that. So, thank you. Listen, y'all, the American church is doomed. It's doomed. You got preachers swag surfing, walking it out. You got preachers saying all this stuff that's not in the scriptures. And a lot of these American modern day, you know, Christians don't want a God to obey. In my honest opinion, that's what I'm noticing. They want a God that they can control. They want a God that they can dictate. They want a God that they can instruct. And y'all know, like First Corinthians says in First uh, Corinthians chapter two, verse sixteen, it says, "For who understood?" 
understood the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him. And these people want to instruct God according to their feelings. They want to dictate God according to their feelings. They don't care about the word. They don't care what the words say. You know what I mean? They want a God that they can control. But like I always say, and like I always ask, what is the point of having a God to worship and praise when you're the one who made him? And who controls him? When you the one that can dictate how he move his rules and regulations, what is the point of having a God? Man? Like, real rap. But then it dawned on me. That's what the folk did back there in the Old Testament. You know what I mean? They built idols and gods that they can control and instruct. They built a golden calf. I remember when they did that in the scriptures. They built idols out of wood and clay. And then they turned around and worshiped those gods and idolized those gods that they made with their own hands. In my honest opinion, that's another level of stupid. That is another level. What is the point of creating a God to worship? God created you to worship him, not you create him to worship. Like, anyway, and what I'm noticing, a lot of these libertarian, a lot of these Americanized Christians in general, they cherry pick the Bible. They cherry pick the scriptures and what they do in essence is trying to formulate their own God. So they go to this scripture, they go to that scripture, they go for this book and go to that book and try to build their own God around their own feelings and personal beliefs. Now, Elle went viral over her tweet for saying Apostle Paul was a jerk. Now, I don't know if y'all noticed or not, but this is what I'm starting to notice, you know, in these Christian streets around, um, amongst these Americanized preachers today. Do y'all notice that they don't preach holiness? You know, they don't preach holiness to people. They subtly endorse hypersexuality, sexual immorality, gender identities above everything else. You notice that, right? It's never about holiness and, and consecrating yourself to God. It's, uh, you know, they, they, they preaching all this stuff. They not even preaching identity in Christ. Everything is trying to, if you notice, this is what I'm saying. This is what y'all need to notice. They try, they say they are Christians. They go to church, but they spend more time trying to debunk what the scriptures don't say to try to get you comfortable with what they trying to say by cherry picking the scriptures to make you feel comfortable in your mess. Y'all peep that? Cause I peep that, or or is it just me? Is it or is it just me? See, she introduced herself as Pastor L, and then she goes on to say she goes by the the pronouns of she and they. You know what I mean? What's the point of that in the church? You see what I'm saying? What was the point of that? And then the next thing she did was try to debunk what the Bible didn't say, so she can put push forward what she was trying to say that wasn't even scriptural. You see what I'm saying? Check this out. She initially said, y'all, y'all just saw that clip. She just said part of the part of the she left out a part of the scripture, and she's she's like because it was yikes. You might have noticed that we didn't read one part out loud, and that's because it's yikes. Y'all saw that. Now here's the thing I want y'all to peep. You know what I mean? She said she's going to put that scripture in its proper context, right? Then she proceeded to talk about the context without citing the source of the context. Now, here's the crazy thing, right? Ask yourself, how come she didn't lead with the context she was referring to or the source she was referring to? I'll tell you why. It's because she sold on deceiving people. See, it's false teachers like her that soon as you ask them, where's the original text, you know, that you're referring to? Where did you get that from? They will they will be quick to say, go do your own research. You have to get you have to do your own research. No, 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 ma'am. You're teaching this right now. It's your responsibility to tell us right now. That's like the teach. That's like us going to school and the teacher, the teacher pool. What's one plus one? And then, and then and you ask the teacher, okay, what's one plus one? And she said, go for, go do your own research, Miss Man. You're teaching us right now. Help us get the answers. You see what I'm saying? Yo, they can't cite their source. So what they do is, you know, they they start quoting gurus. 
<laughs> they start using sources from so-called scholars who allegedly did some research and found this and found that. You notice a lot of these scholars, right, that that people like her, you know, quote, they are standalone scholars. It's probably like one or two of them versus the many scholars that prove the Bible already in its original content, the, the way we had. Here's the thing, man. Second Timothy chapter four, verses three and four. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap up teachers for themselves, having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. And that's exactly what we see with a lot of these Americanized Christians. They are in love with their flesh and their, you know, their desires. So they twist the word and they come up with different doctrines to appease to people, other people who's in love with their fleshly desires as well. That's that's essentially what they're doing. Now, to address that whole Apostle Paul is a jerk, you know, you know, little clip she said, you know what I mean? Now, she felt that Apostle Paul handling with the Corinthian church is, you know, played a part in, in the whole inciting violence on Jewish people throughout the ages. Um, Ma'am, L, L, you do know Paul was from the tribe of Benjamin, a Jew. You, you 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 do know that right in fact let's let's before he converted you know what before paul's conversion you know he persecuted the church of god in christ right like you you, you do know that miss l I, listen man y'all see what she's doing here she's using fake love and empathy to twist the scriptures Look, that's a, and that's exactly what a lot of these fake pastors and fake, I call them fake, but a lot of these preachers are doing, they, they using fake empathy and fake uh, 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 love to twist the scriptures, acting like they love people and doing this, that, and the third, just, just so they can appease to people's feelings. That's exactly what they're doing all under the, the, the banner of love. That ain't love. They don't, they don't love y'all. I don't think people like her really, and, pe and pe people who preach like her don't really believe in Christ or trust in the scriptures. I, I really don't believe they do. Y'all remember what the scripture says in Galatians chapter two, verses four. Yet because of false brothers secretly brought in who slipped in to spy out our freedom that we have in Christ Jesus so that they might bring us into slavery. See, it's false teachers like her and many preachers like her, you know, and others that come in and they spy out our freedom. And you, and if you ask me, they are spies from the devil. They don't trust God. They don't truly trust, you know, believe in the scriptures. They are spies. That's why they have, they, that's why they have to come in and twist the scriptures because they, they mind is set on, you know, causing division, causing confusion, causing disruption, you know, to, to, and for, to the people in the church. And what the, what the Bible says about the devil, he come to steal, kill and destroy. Y'all notice they never mention nothing about holiness. They don't preach holiness. You know what I mean? They they they, they keep they, they they whole ministry is about do what you want, do what you will, and God still will accept you. That's their whole ministry. If you sit back and just observe them, I dare y'all just go sit back and observe them. Everything is about gonna be gonna be about how God will accept you how you are. There's no pretty much what they saying. There's no point in being born again. You can just come be religious and sit in a church pew. Holiness is evil to them. Promiscuity is good. I'm going to say it again. Holiness is evil. Promiscuity is good to them. And like the scripture says, there will become a time where people will call bad good and good bad. And that's what we're saying. And he said, that's, <laughs> listen, y'all better work out your salvation with fear and with trembling. Keep your eyes stayed on Christ, bearing the fruits of his spirit, obeying the commands of God. Like I just said, what is the purpose of a God you build and you can build and control and, and, and instruct? What is good? What, you, our whole goal, everything about Christ, right? If you think about everything about Christ, everything about Christ was to get us to obey God and leave all the rest to him. I find it crazy that it's folk out here that go out their way to disobey God, disobey the word just to please people. 
I mean, it's crazy. But like in a nutshell of this whole summary of what she was trying to say, she pretty much like, yo, ignore the Bible. You know what I mean? You know, let us give let us give you what we think you should have in the Bible. Appeal to the culture and appeal to humans feelings, regardless of what God said. That's pretty much what she's saying. A lot of these other preachers swag surfing and, and doing all this stuff. You know, that's pretty much what they saying, essentially, man. But yeah, let me know what y'all think about this. It's your boy, Reese Johnson. This is the Gutter and Saint podcast. Y'all already know, man. You already know. Do something for the podcast. Stick around for these last announcements. Cashmerch.com Vintage Saint Collection Kata and Saint Abstract Collection Shop now at gasmerch.com The gate is spitting. I tell them I'm Christ like they envision modern Christian. I tell them I'm done like check conditions. I, I'm living. I preach Christ. We ain't fake delivering. Listen. Candy man, soon as they. It's not about how much Bible chapter and verse you know. It's about how much Bible you willing to obey.